Morning. Another nice day. We had some rain last night, which was good because the uh, it's getting a bit dry. Streams are all getting a bit low, and because we collect our water from the streams at the moment with buckets, which I'm looking forward to resolving. Um, it's good to have some rain. Although today is nice and sunny again, so I suspect it'll all dry out. What did we do yesterday? I didn't film it because it wasn't much use. Um, a bit boring, but I pulled out a fence from here because this is where I come to get the water and it's barbed wire and stuff and it all collapsed and it's quite a nice place to be. We received the delivery of the Defender and uh, Sun had a thorough play with that. We received the boiler, which I fitted and it works. So we uh, had my first hot shower in two or three weeks. I pulled down an extra bit of the top there and also some bits at the top here because we pulled down the actual structure in the last video, but there was some bits hanging up there that I needed to remove. So I've just got a nice clear, fresh space ready for the new timber. And solar panels arrived, which was awesome. Um, I spent ages and ages and ages setting them up. Did some really careful wiring, got the angle all perfect for the sun. Um, really had to go deep dive into science mode to get that ready. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't. I just put them on the floor <laughs> and um, I plugged it in. That's it. It's in really, really like you see the shadow from this post covers this one. The shadow from that post covers this one. But I just wanted to see because you always have these quotes of solar panels, like how much power do they produce? And these are 575 watt panels. And yesterday was really nice sunlight today. And I was like, well, what does one panel do, right? What does it do? You plug it in, obviously you don't get 575 watts, but I just wanted to be like, well, how important is the angle, right? What if you just lay it on the floor? How, what does it do? Is it, let's say it produces 400 watts in good conditions. If you lay it on the floor, does it produce two watts or does it produce 375 watts, right? What's the deal? Um, actually makes makes enough difference to to want to get it right but maybe 10 20 percent difference not 85 percent difference so if you don't get them set up exactly as they should be not much of a bother so actually they're on the floor but they are charging the battery at the minute and we are in this condition right now which the, the sun is actually behind the clouds i don't know if you see but it's behind the clouds um and we're getting 500 watts at the minute and one of the panels is obstructed. So one of the things that you wanna make sure with solar panels that I've heard is if you obstruct some of it, so you've got a shadow across it, sometimes the whole panel shuts off because um, they're wired in a way that means if you obstruct some of it, all of it's not gonna produce. I, I suspect these have sections. So if you obstruct some of it, that whole section stops, but um, yeah, the orientation seems to not make a huge difference, but if you block some of it with some shadow, like a, a corner of the panel, that does make quite a big difference. Um, but I'm just kind of seeing how it works at the minute. Like how, how much power do we get? Um, they are eventually gonna go on this roof here, the top of this, so that they're roughly in the position of the site. They're not. Okay, so that was yesterday. Smells a bit damp in there, so um, I'm trying to air it out. What is today? You'll probably know before me because I will have put it in the description. Um, but I'm going to start with reassembling the grand piano because I undid some of the strings in. This is my wife's grand piano, not mine. I can't. I'm not musical in any way, shape, or form. I sound like a howling dog when I even sing it. Occasions which require singing. Um, but I undid some of the strings in order to transport it. And I don't think it's a very good idea to leave them unstrung for very long. So I'd like to try and get that restrung. I thought when I did it, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just cut the strings. And uh, the piano itself wasn't, wasn't very much money. We got it from an auction, or I got it for an auction for a gift for my wife for her birthday. Um, but pianos, grand pianos can be tens of thousands of pounds, perhaps even more. I'm sure they could be more musical instruments can, but um, I thought, oh, I'll just cut the strings. I didn't, I didn't cut the strings, okay, didn't. 
I luckily checked how much it would be to restring a grand piano, baby grand, and you're looking at somewhere around £3,000 to restring it. I was like, oh my God, am I glad I didn't go in there with a pair of pliers and just bing, 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 and then check the price. Um, but because they're that much, I want to restring, I only did the, the lower strings, I just want to rehook them um, so that it's, you know, the tension's correct. So I'm going to start with that and then we'll, we'll work our way around and see what happens with the rest of the day. I'm going to go and get my piano key, which is it's one of those tools that I certainly would never have, but I uh, wish I'd had when I was undoing those strings. But I think what we'll do throughout the day is we'll just check this, check the power from those solar panels, because it's been something I've always been super interested to know, like in the real world, what's, what, what happens? So it's 10.24 and currently coming in, we've got 440 watts and it seems to be fluctuating around about 400 and 500 watts. So I'm gonna see, we'll check in every now and again. Yesterday at lunchtime, those three panels in the same place in the same configuration. <clears throat> We're making a kilowatt, which is 1000 watts, which is half as much as it costs to boil a kettle, but boiling a kettle only lasts for a few minutes. Whereas that continuously, if you imagine a dripping tap into a bath, you'll get a full bath by the end of the day. So be interesting. I'm not going to turn the generator on until the end of the day if I have to, uh, but we'll keep checking in and see how, how that does. might seem like we're skitting around a bit doing different jobs and, and you'd be right that we are skitting around a bit doing different jobs but uh, the timber for the workshop that was supposed to be here two days ago and if not two days ago then yesterday is suddenly not arriving for another week so that's why we're doing jobs like this um, I've done a couple of classic cars in the past when I was younger and the thing I've learned that is really important is I mean, yeah, labeling is important, but you don't always get to that. But the screws, just put them back in place where they were before. If you've got bolt, hole, bolt holes, then thread them back in and you just know that they're all gonna be there. Um, but in this case, I've just put a bit of masking tape on one side and threaded the screws back through the other side. Um, especially with something like this that's timber, you want the same screw going back in the same hole because it threads, it cuts when it um, threads through in timber. So if you put a slightly wider one back in and then a thinner one, it won't grip the same and you'll do damage to it. Uh, they're all different lengths here and different, they're just different screws. Um, so I always try and put them all back together as they, like in the box as much as they possibly can be. So when you reassemble it, you know where to go. This one says 1974 on it, which is one of the corner pieces for the hinge, I think. I'm no piano tuner, but I undid these, some of them, and I'm reckoning that, see there's a bit of shiny bit there, and then over here, there's a bit of shiny bit there. So I think if I, firstly what I'm doing is I've unpinned these from here, and they kind of go like round like that. So I'm repinning them. I've only done this bit. And then I think if I find that, and I just tighten it up, so that this shiny bit here becomes non-shiny, like that. Um, obviously it's not going to be in tune perfectly, but at least the tension will be closer to where it was. Heat's going to change and stuff in here anyway, so there's likely to be a bit of, uh, it's going to need a heavy retune when we move into the house that we've built, but glad I noticed that because it'll make it a bit easier to guess where it's, what kind of tension we're supposed to be under.
Time to check the solar, I think. Still a bit cloudy today, but it's nice and sunny, so. And it's now 11.30, so about an hour later. What are we doing? 730, 730 watts. So it says it takes four hours to charge at that, which oh, I think we're gonna do it, you know? I think we're gonna charge all, all of that up today because the sun's only gonna get better. I think the peak's around two o'clock. Um, sort of goes, it goes up like that here. Brilliant. I think we're gonna have our lunch today by the waterfall because it's nice weather and I've got a feeling the seasons not last forever. So we'll go and have a sit down here and enjoy the sun whilst it's here. There's a lot of cobwebs across the trees. So you've got to be careful. There's a bumblebee. I've noticed the bees here. There goes my lunch. Notice the bees here are not as vibrantly coloured as they were back in the, the Midlands. And uh, there's also robins here, which are not quite as vibrantly red either. So everything seems to be slight, well the animals anyway, slightly less coloured than they were before. Um, trying to find a way, I'm gonna go all the way down there. I'll probably just sit down here. Um, yes, yeah, so there's cobwebs that, between most of the trees, which means that you often end up walking through one and you end up with a spider having a run around. It's not a problem, but I feel bad for displacing him. I really do my hands free for this, in case you see me tumble my way all the way down into the water. There's a bit of a dry bit down there, but I really need my hands, so I'll see you down there. I've changed my mind. I was going to climb down, down there. Um, so this is really, really slippy. And I've just spotted that bit over there, which is dry and a bit easier to get to. I have been down there, but I've also fallen over on that rock and it really hurts. Um, and when it goes, it's a bit like ice, you just end up straight over before you've got a chance to catch yourself. So I'm gonna go back up and climb over the other side. You see the way the water's carved away the stone. You can see it because the water's quite low, but that's all one piece there. And it's just it's got all these lovely, lovely smooth bits in it. If you remember the first video I did when I had a dunk in the river, it was in that bit there, which was just a small pool because the water was even lower then than it is now. I think the simplest, simplest lunches are my favorite. You know, the ones where you have just a big chunk of bread, big chunk of cheese. Eat it all with your hands. An apple. Plowman's lunch, I suppose. We've got something similar today. I've got pizza bread. Um, some kind of other stuff, some vegetables. Can you see this branch behind me? I thought it was a... Well, I didn't think it was a snake, but I thought it looks a lot like a snake. But it's just kind of grown down and then obviously changed its mind and come back up. I don't know if it's a root, a root that's changed its mind or a branch, but head back now, I suppose. 
I feel like I should have a bag with a stick over it, you know, one of those, like they used that, when story fairy tales, those kind of books. Tupperware, carrying that around doesn't seem to be all that easy um, over this kind of terrain, especially the two. There we go. Don't know if you remember a few videos ago, but we had a, it was a Hercules in the end, not an A400M that flew down here, but I figured out why they, why they fly low in this valley and we've got a naval base the other side of the hill. That's a navy base, not a belly button, belly button place. Um, but I suspect they're probably doing low level radar avoidance because the, um, they'll be able to get low enough to see if they can avoid being detected by the base the other side. So I suspect that's probably why they use this valley. Uh, it's not Mach Loop or anything around here. So being in Scotland, I feel like I should be like Mach Loop. I'm not even sure what these things do. I think they have something to do with turning it off because I haven't found an on off switch yet. And this foam thing on the top, when you pluck a string, oh wow, that sounded great, didn't it? Pluck a string and then you put one of these down. I reckon it probably just switches it off, do you think? A lot of them though. Time for another solar check-in. I think it's one o'clock and we are showing 800. Can you see it? 830. Yeah. I think the thing that surprises me the most, well, I don't know the most, but something that surprises me with renewables is that it fluctuates quite a lot. I think you, you know that the grid is 240 volts and you um, you just imagine that everything is delivered in a, a specific capacity and when you see it kind of, you, you know it would fluctuate but perhaps I thought it might fluctuate between the morning, lunchtime and evening, not every second it's like 8.40, 8.50, 8.70, 7.90, 7 all over the place. Um, but we're still cloudy today so that's probably why we're not quite pushing a kilowatt it's one o'clock and yesterday we were getting a kilowatt, which is 1000 watts at about one, two o'clock. So, um, but it's doing well. I haven't turned the generator on and I reckon maybe we'll be charged by the end of the day. All right, the sun's just come out. It's only about a minute since I last recorded the, um, that and it's gone up to 7.20. But I, I want to see how much difference angle makes. So I'm going to just prop them up a little bit and see how much difference that makes. Because it's um, part of this stuff for me is about experimenting. I want to see how much difference does angle make, how much um, do different pieces of electricity you use. Like the whole off grid thing is, is kind of fun for me just to, just to try stuff. So I'm going to, I'll probably put a bucket under each one and just see, see what difference it makes. But yeah, it's all interesting, isn't it? All right, so we've angled them up and they're probably not optimum angle, but they are more optimum angle. So if we see an increase in watts, then we know that it does make a difference. <clears throat> I'm expecting it does, but it's gonna be interesting to see how much Oh, wow. Okay, so the difference between that and what it was before is 1200 watts. That's nearly double. Wow, okay, so that makes a really big difference. I'm just gonna check it's still cloudy and that didn't, that didn't make most of our... Uh, the sun 
the sun has just popping outside. So there might have been a slight increase from that, but yeah, that, that change in angle really made a big difference. The post has arrived. I've just checked the um, power again, just to see if we were on a really high point and it is still pulling a thousand watts, just 1100 there. So that seems to be the angle may have made a, a pretty big, you know that angle is important, right? But sometimes it's just really, really interesting to have a go yourself and be like, right, okay, how much? How much does it make a difference? There's people just being picky, but um, sometimes it's really satisfying just to experience, experience it yourself so that you know, uh, oh, so that you know it really does, really does make a difference. All of the parcels are addressed to my wife at the moment, so I've no idea if this is gonna be more nappies or anything off. Uh. We have kids popcorn chips. They are actually called chips, not crisps. Popped corn chips, barbecue flavor. Fruit and grainy bakes. We have crispy sticks. Oh, look at them, got chocolate in them. This is all very relevant. These are good, multi-grain hoops covered in cocoa instead of, um, like they're not sweetened, it's just cocoa on top of Cheerios. So as far as cereal go, that, that, this is good. I add about a handful of mine to oats and then I have, it's just, these are nice. Obviously they're not for me, they're all for Casper, but. Squeezy Yogurt Tropical, Pico Kids. Kind of looks like we're sponsored by Piccolo, doesn't it? All this Piccolo stuff. Um, well, I was expecting a pump, if I'm honest, but there we go. These are not all as they should be. They, These are all right. These, these are a bit wonky, so I think I adjusted those a bit wrong. Um, but it's not my intention to get this working perfectly it's more i just want it together so that it doesn't decide it wants to stay apart and remember that as it's as its default state i want it to be um together and remember all of its limbs i filmed when we were here ages ago i filmed my brother and i um putting this together from the from the start so i think i'll probably put that clip in here so that um well for the sake of variety, let's say. You see, it's not just, although I'm the only one you sit, well, in me and Casper and my wife occasionally in the, uh, in the video, it's not just me making this possible. My mum, before we moved up here, did all of our washing because I'd moved the washing machine up here before we, um, before we moved. So she did all of that. My brother helped me move. Um, he came up and gave his hand with all the heavy stuff. So, although it's just me that you see doing this, there are a lot of more, a lot more people. Aha, that's where that screw came from. There are a lot more people helping behind the scenes. Might be me doing the day-to-day -day stuff, but it's, um, it's important to acknowledge the help, the help that you get. I'm not sure doing anything like this is quite possible without the support of your wider network whether that's your family or your friends or neighbors or you know whatever that network is i think if you want to do anything out of the ordinary or complicated like this um people like that are pretty essential to the journey i mean imagine coming up with an idea and saying oh i'd love to do i'd love to do this and then you know, you want to change jobs or something and the, your, your wife and family just don't support you with it. You'd, you just wouldn't do it, would you? I don't know if you can see, but there's a piece of wood behind here that had to be removed in order to... Um, my original intention was to remove the sandboard because this was heavy. See the clip we'll put in now, it's of, um, of my brother and I moving it and we moved it out of the flat and we moved it into here. Um, 
but I think most of the weight is in the soundboard. So it was my plan of moving that, but then I realized you have to take all the strings off if you want to do that, because they're, they're sort of wired, connected through here to this bit of wood, which I think it's just, you have to disassemble the whole thing. So that's why I changed my mind halfway, which is why I'm restringing this. Um, but, oh, because I had to take this piece of wood out in anticipation of removing this. Now I can't quite screw that back in. So that might have to stay just like that for now. Put the lid, I think we'll put the, the kind of front lid, what do you call it? The keys, key lid. <clears throat> this just slots on, I think. Get this bit lined up. I'm lucky really my wife lets me do stuff like this because if um, she was super delicate about it, she'd be like, don't bang that, don't do that. Well, it's a good job I'm putting it back together, isn't it? Because that's tighter than it was before on the sides. That's just gonna have to stay like that. Uh, you know what, I've got, I wonder if I've got a spacer that I can just put it. Yes, I always have spacers. Goes pretty well with a grand piano. Things seem to remember where they were. That's why, why I'm putting it back together. So if that were to be left to sag, because that screw's not in, it, the wood would slowly over time twist. So that's why I'm trying to put everything back. Um, so that's why I'm leaving space for there. <laughs> hinges are super easy, just got two hinge pins that you just wedge in through the hinges and that's, that's how to put them back together. Sometimes wrist door hinges are like that. I'm not gonna put the throttle pedals on because we wanna put some stuff under here and it's not structural. It kind of hangs off under there. So I'm gonna leave that um, un, unfixed and let's have a look. <laughs> I have to say this bit, I didn't touch. Wow. There we go, off-grid piano. I'm afraid it's probably going to be all I'm going to get done today because that took me far longer than I expected it to. Um, we're going to go to the post office now to post a... Um, something we sold on eBay, so we'll probably take you along for the journey, but it won't be anything of me talking, it'll just be just be the ride along in the back of the Defender. Because um, I've pulled down the wall in the workshop now, I'm just deciding on where I want this to be and the gap there, and before it was like this, you couldn't see the hill, but now I'm like, wow. I feel like I've got to keep, um, I'm gonna put a window or something in, or windows across the top here because the view at the top of the hill, I mean, imagine working in your workshop and you're just looking out. I'm gonna have windows 
like here and here so that when I'm over there doing stuff, don't know what's going to go down there yet. I can look down at the, the river, but being able to look up at the, up at the hill as well, is going to be something pretty spectacular. But I didn't realize the view was quite like that until I just pulled it down and came in here and I was like, wow, kind of forget your, forget you're here when you're in the barn sometimes. So, uh, that's, that's that. We're going to go to the post office now and um, in the next video we, we might get on the construction depending on when Travis Perkins decide to turn up. But who knows, who knows, more off-grid stuff. Um, I did check back with the solar panels and I realised that perhaps some of that increase was from the sun coming out from the clouds because I, I checked again and it was back down to about 800 watts. And then I altered the height again just by, I don't know, 10 centimetres or so, and that didn't make any difference. Um, so I expect a large amount of that increase was just that we happened to change the angle at the same point that the sun popped out from the cloud. So it did make a difference, but probably not quite as drastic a difference as double um, as, as perhaps I thought. So if you want to join us in the next one, I'd like to see you there. Friday, so we're going to have some nice drinks tonight. Maybe have a good weekend. See you in the next one. Thought I'd, uh, thought I'd just finish the video on the status of the solar as we've been doing that all day. And it's three o'clock and we have 100% battery and it's pulling in at the moment. Oh, I said zero, but when I just checked it, because it was 99%, it was pulling in about 650 watts. So it took until three, three o'clock to charge with varied, varied input, but We've got six panels and there's three. The battery is 3.5 kilowatt, if that makes a difference to anybody. Uh, it's one of those EcoFlow um, Delta sort of boxes that, that does it all for you. So, please, I'll plug them in because the generator hasn't got, had to go on at all today. Good, good, good.